Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer with education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the configuring UTM antivirus with JWeb Learning Byte. All right, here is our example. We have a few different things I want to point out. First, we have user one that is connected to VSRX1. And then VSRX1 connects to the internet. And on the internet, there's a server called the internet server that we'll be doing some things with. And so what we want to do here is we want to configure Sophos antivirus engine, and we want to you know, configure that antivirus protection if there's a virus found, we want to specify a custom message that says virus found explanation. However, we want to whitelist the internet server. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and jump to the JWeb interface for VSRX1 and set this up. Okay, so here is the JWeb interface for VSRX1. And when we first log in, we log into the configure workspace. However, we're in the basic settings system identity. It just tells us a few different things here. Now, one thing I do want to point out here is notice how under DNS servers that it shows something configured. It shows a couple DNS, or actually four of them, configured. Now, this is very important for Sophos antivirus because we're going to need to, or rather VSRX1 is going to need to communicate with uh, the online Sophos servers. And so if we don't have DNS configured, there's no way we can do that. So keep that in mind, DNS is very important. So we're under the configure workspace. We need to go to security and then we need to go to UTM. And under here, we can go to antivirus. And here we have a few different things I want to point out. We have a default antivirus profile set up, but we don't want to use that. Let's go ahead and configure our own profile. And the first thing I want to point out is we have the global options and we select that. We have a few different options. We have, we can set the uh, MIME, whitelist, an exception MIME whitelist, a URL whitelist. Uh, that URL whitelist part is going to be important because we want to whitelist that internet server, so keep that in mind. And so there's nothing here currently because we haven't configured a whitelist yet. Now the engine type, the only option here is set to Sophos. Now something I do want to point out for JWeb is that you do need to click on the global options to begin here because this sets the engine type to Sophos. Even though it's the only option, you still have to click on global options to set the engine type to SOFO. So if we were not to click on global options and click OK here, then JWeb doesn't actually set the engine type to SOFO. So that's very important. And then we have some, uh, some other engine options that we can all leave at the default. There's no need to mess with that. So we can click OK here. Now, note that we will come back to here to reference the URL whitelist for the internet server in a minute. So let's go ahead and create a new antivirus profile. And we're just going to call this, let's just call this LB-AV for learning bytes. And we have some trickling timeout. We can leave that alone. Uh, URI checking. Now that's a good thing to select URI checking because it's the universal resource identifier checking. And what it does there is it'll do a quick check to see if that URI is something on a blacklist. And so it's going to speed up the process of the antivirus scanning. We do have some content size limits, some scan engine timeout settings, things like that. We can leave that at the defaults. That's just fine. And then we have fallback settings. Now, this is what happens if there's a problem scanning a file. So the default action, we can set that to permit. Uh, we didn't specify anything about fallback actions in the criteria of the case study, but we can talk about it still. Content size, you know, if it's too big, we can set that to permit, or we can even set that to log and permit. So then that way we have a log that, hey, something got through. We can set that to block. Engine not ready. If the Sophos scanning engine isn't ready, we can specify what to do there. And if something times out, takes too long to scan, we can specify what to do out of resources such as memory available, and then too many requests. If there's too many requests coming in, we can specify what to do there. So keep that in mind. Not really part of the case study, but it's still important to know. Okay, so notification options. Now this is basically for the fallback. What happens if there's a fallback uh, situation? For example, we have a fallback block. If there's anything that was a fallback block, we can set up a, some sort of notification, a protocol notification, which will piggyback on the protocol or message to the sender and the user, specify a custom message, do things like uh, specify an email to be sent to the administrator address, things like that. And we also have fallback non-block. So if it does get blocked, that would be the, you know, hey, we had a problem, the engine wasn't ready, but that fallback setting was set to permit. And so we can specify stuff there as well. 
not necessary for this case study, so that's fine. And then we have notification options. And this is, you know, the tab says notification options continue because this is just additional notification options if a virus is detected. And here is where we want to change things. Notification type is fine, it's a message, so the user will get a message in the browser. If they're trying to download something through HTTP. Uh, notify sent mail sender, we can just leave that a yes or no, that's not gonna matter for what we're doing because we're worried about web traffic. And then the custom message, we do wanna change this. We wanna change this to virus found explanation mark. Custom message subject, that's if it's examining email messages. Again, that's not necessary for what we need. So let's go ahead and click okay. And then since we've configured that antivirus profile, we need to go to custom objects to specify the whitelist of the internet server. So here we can specify a URL pattern. Click create. And for the pattern name, we want to specify, just call it whatever we need. We'll just call this LB pattern. And the value, we want to specify the value of the server. Click the plus to add the value, click OK. Then we need to specify that or reference that URL pattern in a URL category. Click the create button, we'll call this lb-av for the URL category name. Move the lb pattern over, click OK. And then we can go back to the antivirus profiles and click the global options. And here's where we can reference the URL whitelist that we just created. Note that we do have an MIME whitelist that is just there by default, the Junos default bypass MIME. However, we, we really don't need that. We could set that to none. That's not a big deal. Uh, we could use it. It's not gonna cause problems. So click okay here. Okay, so next we need to create a UTM policy. And under here, we go to the UTM policy workspace and click create and specify a name. We're just gonna call this UTM-LB. And then we can specify some traffic options like sessions per client limit, sessions per client over limit, or what to do for if that session per client goes over that limit. We can log and permit or block, whatever. We're just gonna leave that blank, that's fine. And then we have different profiles we can reference. Now, the thing to keep in mind here is we could specify an antivirus profile, web filtering, anti-spam, content filtering profiles, things like that, all in one UTM policy. But for this learning bite, we're just focused on antivirus profiles. So we go to antivirus profiles and we have a few different options here and it depends on all what we want to be able to scan. And with us, with this learning bite, we just want to focus on HTTP. So we're gonna select the LBAV antivirus profile that we created earlier. Now we could also specify that for FTP upload, download, things like that, IMAP. However, for this case study and this learning bite, we're not worried about that. And so then we can click okay. Now, one last thing we need to do is create a firewall policy that references the uh, UTM policy we just created. So we're going to click on firewall policy, then rules, and we need to create a new rule, and we're going to call this UTM-LB or AV-LB, and then under the source, we can specify the user zone, that's fine, and then destination, specify the internet, and then under advanced security, let's set this to permit, and then set the UTM to the UTM profile that we just created. And then under rule options, we don't need anything there. So we can click finish and then click OK. And now we can commit the configuration. OK, now that the configuration has been committed, let's jump to user one to see how this works. OK, so here is user one. Let's go to the eCar website. And here we can download some fake malware and this will allow us to test to see if the antivirus is working correctly. So we can click on the ecar.com and great, this is what we expect. We have our custom message of virus found and some other information of you know where we tried to download that from and where it's going to, things like that. And so great, that's been detected. So let's go to the internet server and we have that ecar.com file there as well. So let's go ahead and try to download that. This should work. And it does, we're able to download that no problem because we whitelisted this server. All right, so let's go ahead and jump back to the JWeb interface for VSRX1 and take a look at some uh, antivirus statistics.
All right, we're back at the JWeb interface. And so let's go to the monitor workspace. And then we can go to security and then UTM and then antivirus. And here under antivirus, we have some general antivirus information uh, like the update server, uh, the interval in minutes that it'll reach out to get the next update, when that next update's gonna happen, the last result, you know, shows already have the latest database, the AV signature version, things like that. And then we can expand the antivirus statistics and to see more information. We can see under the UTM antivirus statistics that we have scanned two items and one threat was found. And that threat was that fake malware from the eCar website. And then the other one that was scanned was uh, part of the whitelist. That's why it doesn't even show as clean because it wasn't even a clean file. We didn't even check it. And so that was part of the whitelist. And so that's why you see two total, one threat found. So that's why we have that in the statistics. So that brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we demonstrated how to configure UTM antivirus using JWeb. And then we demonstrated how to verify UTM antivirus functionality using JWeb. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.